Welcome to Lead for Building Simulators. In this course, we are going to explore and discuss lead from the perspective of an energy modeler. As you likely know, lead stands for leadership in energy and environmental design. But before we begin, let's make sure that we have a fundamental understanding of lead. So what is lead anyway? Well, LEED is an optional green building rating system developed and maintained by the U.S. GBC or the U.S. Green Building Council. Although LEED is considered optional, it's important to note LEED has become so popular it is now mandatory in many locations worldwide. It is also mandated for certain building types, such as federal buildings, in the United States. It is based on a 100 point system, although there are an extra 10 points, making the system effectively 110 points. Based on the number of points a building earns, there are four certification levels LEED certified, silver, gold, and platinum. As you can see, a certified building requires 40 points, lead silver requires 50 points, lead gold requires 60, and lead platinum requires 80 points. Essentially, lead is an award for your building, but it is more than just a plaque. The ultimate goal of lead is to do what is best for the environment and the people in it. And that sounds simple enough. So the next question you may have, why do we need lead to be green? Can't we just make the building green ourselves? And yes, you could do that, but with lead certification, we also get the added value of credibility. The schemes implemented by lead are time-tested measures that are determined by hundreds, if not thousands, of industry experts. Without this credibility, how can we really know if the building was built by true green methods? Any old clown can call a building green, but do we take them for their word? So what LEED really does is this. It gives us third-party verification, and LEED is trusted worldwide. Without a trusted party, a building could simply be labeled green as an excuse to increase the rent. Remember, any old dictator could call a building green, but should we take him for his word? Now that we understand the value of LEED, let's see how it works. LEED contains a very large set of rules and requirements. In fact, there are multiple sets of rules based on the building type. We are going to focus on the LEED rating systems that require energy modeling, such as core and shell, and new construction. With all of this detail, Many people are confused about who does what. Here, we are going to focus on where the energy modeler is involved. In a very simplistic work environment, an architect's design team creates plans for a green building. It's important to note that these plans should already have lead requirements implemented in them. The energy modeler takes these plans and creates a virtual representation of these plans on a computer. The energy modeler also creates a virtual lead baseline building, so the actual building has something to be compared to. We will discuss more on these buildings later. The energy modeler gives the final results to the lead project manager who can then submit these results to LEED Online for review. 
So this relationship is simply not. But, as we know, there are always more people involved, and relationships are much more complex. Furthermore, the energy modeler may be on the engineering team, or could also be directly involved anywhere else in the project. In general, the energy modeler gets existing information from the architect and engineering team and distributes information to the lead project manager. If the energy modeler has trouble, he or she may need to submit a credit interpretation ruling, or CIR. This will determine exactly what to do in a complex situation. For now, it will suffice to say that every project has its own set of relationships, but in general, the energy modeler's job stays the same, though there may be added responsibilities. Before we start, we need to ask ourselves, what do we need to get started? Here are some materials that you need before you can expect to have any success as an energy modeler. You will need a lead manual, and even more than the lead manual, you will need an ASHRAE 90.1 manual, as well as the user's manual. Of course, you need building simulation software. And finally, I would recommend that you are either a lead AP or you have one nearby. Remember, the AP stands for Accredited Professional. Don't forget, people get accredited and buildings get certified. And, while we're at it, it is AP and not APE. And, it's LEAD and not LEADS. Not that I wish to offend anyone, but I think you would rather hear it from me than from a client. In our next lesson, we are going to quickly cover all of the LEAD credits and discuss which credits are important to the energy modeler.